how do you generate the leads, right? And I, I found that PropStream was something that I tried for a couple months because I had a few thousand dollars to invest in. Sure. And, uh, into the thing. But there's so many different ways to generate leads that I don't think everybody really thinks about. Like, I just called the county and 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 I got all the all the um, citations for overgrown grass or, mm-hmm. you know, there's citations for vehicles sitting in, yep. you know, dead vehicles sitting on the lawn, right. you know, and there's, there's a lot of different ways just to, just to find out what properties are available and what properties are just fading away with time. Right. So, and, 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 that, and that's what I started doing. I was like, you know what? They have apps out there where you just tag the addresses. I actually just text my personal phone from my work phone the address as I'm stopping by, as I'm driving by to work or driving to driving, drop my kids to baseball, soccer, whatever it is, just tag the houses. And I had 50 by the time I got home that day. Wow, just that's by, great. Just by flagging the... Flagging and it's, the and it's that driving. simple. And it's and it's really that simple. Um, and, and that's what we try to tell some of, some of our members is like there's a bunch of different strategies that you can do that cost zero zero dollars and um i was telling mick sherry that 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 lead that i sent you last night that was from zillow about five weeks ago that i yes that i called and then he called me back five weeks later saying hey are you still interested and he is he is open to owner financing he's open to little to no money down wow he has a a bunch of other properties he wants to get out and the reason is is that there's he's he he didn't get in too much detail I got to dig a little deeper but yeah. he's up against some some tax bracket stuff that he needs yeah. to sell and he needs some cash to right. to kind of counteract what he's what he's going through and that's that's something that we can we can talk more about when we structure it because I think there's going to be a huge opportunity here for with just with this one just with this yeah. one lead um yep. and that was just from zillow right that's right there's pictures there's information and their yeah. phone number yeah that's easy just yeah. just pick up the phone and call right yep and i think we're in a you know the market's changing so i think it's great for us right now what we're trying to do because people are willing to talk and and be more open-minded about this. So. Yeah, and so it, this this call isn't turning out the way I wanted to, but I think we can we can take advantage of this time. Um, yeah. So so Mick, I got on the phone with Mick um, yesterday, I believe it was, and we talked about you know we just kind of connected and we talked about how you know he's looking to to dispo some of his leads that that are just sitting there. Right, and how we can help him with those leads, and okay. and he also has I don't know, I guess it's a partner um, that that he's working with is kind of showing the ropes, and and he he might be struggling with the the conversation point when talking to a seller. So hopefully he'll join our group and we can get him going on and, and have him accountable for making calls. And we we talked about you know the leads that are submitted, what we pay out, um, depending on the level of negotiation, wh- whatever. But this is just from a phone call that Mick and I had, and building a relationship. And let's see if see if this this works. So, and you're a buyer too, right, Mick? Yeah, well, actually, just the last. Um, it's funny because just yeah, um, just yesterday I had my third conversation with an investors group and. Um, through a family member that knew I was doing this, they, they connected me with a, a gentleman named Bill in Florida that's from my hometown, Massachusetts. And uh, sure enough, he has he just sold something for, you know, he bought it for seven hundred fifty thousand, and him and his partner sold it for four point two million. So he, <laughs> he's, wow. he's a hard money lender, and, yeah. and uh, him and I connected, and I'm trying to build a rapport with him to, uh, you know, to to be able to jump on some of these, right? Because I, yeah. I think wholesaling is definitely a, a, a revenue stream. Um, For sure. But there's others out there, right? And having multiple revenue streams is, is my goal. So uh, yeah. I'm definitely working with my partner. Uh, his name's Xavier. Uh, working with him and trying to get him to make the calls and do mm-hmm. a portion of it so he can start um, selling some on his own. 
and uh, getting them under contract. But again, getting them under contract is cheap. Right? Yeah. So, um, so I'm trying to jump into multiple facets. I have one company that does construction um, with just one or two people in it right now, but I want to grow that to 30. Um, that way I can handle the, the level that's coming in. Yeah. Um, after after we, we do start closing these leads, um, I could take on some, but we, we can wholesale the others. And, yeah. And, and use that as, you know, as a, that's all the admin, right? That's all, that covers you, that's covered, that makes sure you, you get paid everything else and then all the other you know everything else that happens with the uh with the flips he's also in construction so he's an electrician i'm electrical by trade um oh, okay. but i'm also a uh, low voltage engineer so i i do um smart homes and stuff like that so okay i made my house a smart home so now i have a template that i'm going to be ingesting into all of my all oh, of that's my great. what a great idea that's yeah, that that's neat awesome. Zero dollar, you know, almost I'm gonna say it's minimal cost because I've already designed the system. So being able to in, input that in there, I just think it's gonna add a flavor of, um, of for the sale. So, my 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 first flip, my partner, he's like, we have to put a Bluetooth speaker in the bathroom. I'm like, come on, look, we don't. This is not gonna fit the budget. Let's, it's it's two hundred dollars. Stop. We're not we're not doing this. And he's like, "Hey, we're getting close to finishing out the project. We got some, we got some little bit of money here. Let's put it in." I go, "Whatever, put it in." Our agent marketed that Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> let me tell you, and loved it. I don't know if it sold the house, but hey, Bluetooth speaker connected to your phone. So I, I think you're onto something there. It's definitely yeah, the smart home is definitely something that um people are interested in. Absolutely, yeah. and especially if you can do it yourself, right? Actually, they sell it at Home Depot, right? Yeah. Like, all it is is the power, because yeah. all you're gonna do is power up the light like a normal, like a normal light. And it's gotcha. Two switches. Once the fan comes on, the Bluetooth's there. And you know, it's nice for um, elderly people too, because um, Paul knows. But we just we're moving my father-in-law into an assisted living this week, and we. We had to take all his furniture, and we had a lamp, and it, you know, you had to turn the knob. And I told my sister-in-law, so I'm like, we need to get him a touch lamp. It's just so much easier. But, I mean, you think about that stuff for elderly people, like, exactly right. Make their life easier. Absolutely. <laughs> step off. I mean, that's the market that we're good for. My aunt lives here, and she, in, in her dexterity in her hands, she just, she has trouble opening up a tea bag. You know what I mean? Sometimes, and, and yeah, yeah sure. I mean, just making it easier for her is, is was my goal, and that's where a lot of it came from. But I think yeah. we're getting a little off topic, but from lead People generation. With disabilities. No, it's all good. Things like that. Yeah, that's cool. Um, let's let's let me go over what I wanted to, and let me know if you guys can see this. That way, is it big enough font? Can you can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Those that are looking at a phone may have it. Yeah. Let me. Yeah, I'm on my laptop, so it's fine. Okay. So this is this is kind of what I wanted to go over with the the newer investors, and hopefully this will get people talking in our group, asking questions. But the idea is, when when role playing, everyone wants a script, right? What's what I need a script. I need to read from a script. And I don't like that. What I like is is having a conversation and using a the lead form. Have you had a chance to see that form at all, uh, Mick? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's very basic. It's very simple. It's a guideline to the conversation. And at any time you're having a conversation with, with a seller, you, you can – if it's a lead where it's on Zillow, where the seller is expecting a call and they're probably getting a lot of phone calls, I typically open up the conversation with, hi, my name is Paul Shugart and I was calling about your property listed on Zillow. Is it still available? Great. And then at that point, talk about the seller's advertised information to start building that rapport. Right, and I always say that gives you an opportunity as as the buyer on the other end, right? Because this could be your tenth call, a hundredth call that day. 
it gives you an opportunity to think. Think about the next question and, and kind of have that form ready and available to fill out. Yeah, go ahead. Just to stop you there. And one of the key things is, in one of, the, in one of my first mistakes, I never read the post all the way through. You Got to read that post. The bottom. I mean, every word that they put in there. Yeah, it's you true. Sure you read it because they'll be like, oh, I already said that. Yeah. Now you've already lost their attention. They're like, you're not really interested. So yep. I just want to add that because it's key to yeah. have that information back in your head because this conversation could jump quickly to the next level. Yep. And it, and there's hidden little nuggets in there too. I've the the lead that I've called on was towards the end of that description, open to owner financing, three three per, looking for three percent down, uh, at least, motivated seller, please call. Literally, they they want you to call them. Those are the ones you really need to pick up the phone and make a, have a conversation, and 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 that's that's really it. Is that your experience, Sherry? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and I was just going to say, when I I'll do some of that, like you said at first, and ask those questions and the questions like Nick said that are mostly already answered. I just confirm them, like, so it looks like it's a two, three bedroom, you know? Yeah, okay, cool. And um, and when I get a little bit more into the condition, I try to do a little bit more listening to them too, and just leave let you know, just keep asking questions, but listening, does that make sense? Yeah. Because a lot of times they will tell me all of this stuff without me having to ask all the questions. Exactly. If they just start answering the questions themselves. If I just listen, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that sounds good. And, and you know. There, so, I think one of the key things is they're, they're already ready to sell. And yeah. Like I've noticed in all the sale trainings that I've ever had, if you just sit there and listen, you're going to get more information than than you, you need. I mean, right? Yeah. And just be a good listener. Like you can keep asking them questions as you're listening, you know, just to get it a little bit further into detail. But but that's what being a good listener too is to actually listen to what they're saying and follow what they're saying and be interested and ask those questions. You don't, you know, it doesn't mean just to sit there and not say anything. It, it means to and that's, let them have a chance to talk and listen to what they're yep. saying. And, and that's where that rapport, right? You want to build yeah. build that rapport and also keep the conversation going, right? You, you need to be able to recognize that it, is there an opportunity here? If you have an adamant seller that is just pushing back, you need to drill down why they're pushing back and and you may have to push back a little further to see if there's an opportunity and if there isn't an opportunity you just need to respectfully get off the phone because yeah. time is money right so we have to move on to the next opportunity and that kind of leads me to okay so that's that's talking about um, Zillow right uh, public advertisement sellers out there pushing their own house for selling those are easy. That's why we believe it's a great um, opportunity to practice talking to people. It's, it's it's already there. But if you're if you're doing a true cold call, right? You you've skip traced, or you have a lead from your network, and you need to pick up the phone to call. That introduction goes something like this. And again, this is general, right? You did, you needed to fit how you speak and how you talk to to um, sellers. Typically when I make a phone call, say, hey, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, I was calling about a property uh, located at 123 Main Street. Are you the owner? They'll either say yes, they'll say no, they'll say, how'd you get my phone number? Whatever. You just need to be able to, to, to be flexible and understand which way you need to go in the conversation. If they say yes, you say, great. I'm looking to purchase property in the area. Have you thought about selling? If they say yes, awesome. Would you mind telling me a, a bit about the condition of the property? This is very similar to the first intro that I do. I always go back to, would you mind telling me a bit about the property? Because again, that gets them talking and it gives me time to think and to yeah. see, hey, are you a motivated seller? And if you are, let's, let's, have, let's get deeper into the conversation and, and drill down to you know, what they're asking for. Yeah. 
Um, One of the key things that I run into is, is matching their energy, right? Yeah. Or, or, or just being slightly above their energy. I'm, I'm more of an energetic person. I get, you know, I get, I get really excited on the phone sometimes, so, you know, and I talk really fast because I'm from Boston. But if they're talking <laughs> slow and, and <laughs> it's, it's tough. You know, they're not gonna, they're gonna be like sensing this guy on the phone. I'm gonna be the person talking to talk to nobody. You know what I mean? But match their energy and just don't. You know, just try to match their level of energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's a that's a great point. So I'm curious. Um, uh, uh, sorry, go ahead, Sherry. Oh, I was just gonna say, and oftentimes, I'm just gonna roll what you were saying, Paul, when you're trying to figure out how they're motivated, and that um, sometimes it sounds like they're not. They're like, oh no, no, no. And I'm like, okay, so you're not. Then I just kind of repeat back. So it sounds like you're not. Da 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 open to this, and you're not open to terms, oh, well, wait, what's that? Oh, well, okay, so sometimes I'll push back and just try to confirm, okay, so you're not there, but then they're like, well, wait. Yeah, <laughs> what's terms? You phone yet, because you are a buyer. Exactly. And then oftentimes it turns into a lead, and they want to know more, and they are a little more open. Exactly, and that, that kind of leads to like objections like um and and I'm curious Mick what are some some objections that you've encountered uh I just put like three bullet points like especially on the Zillow calls when you're calling Zillow or Redfin it's are you a wholesaler are you an investor I don't sell to investors I don't like wholesalers uh, if you lowball me um you, you're wasting your time and and I kind of have some some cookie cutter responses to that but I'm I'm curious if you can add to this to this list of some things no, that you've no, encountered. Yeah, and, and so a lot of the stuff that I've gotten is, how did you get my number? What's yeah. You know what I mean? And yep. I, honestly, I think in that in that in that scenario, let's let's just be honest. Like, hey, yeah. Public information. You know, I, I was able to pull it up from town hall or, you know, the city clerk's office gave me your number because it's public information and just being honest yep, with them. That's true. Is, Absolutely. Is, is gonna is gonna create that rapport with them and it might start opening them up like you guys are saying and. That, I mean, you have it right there. You, a, a lot of people know what wholesaling is now. You know, the, the, the absolutely. They're like, oh, are you a realtor or are you a wholesaler? It's like, well, I work. You know, breaking that is is, is easy to some and hard to the others. So it's like they don't know who you are from a hole in the wall, right? It's, yeah. Right. So it's like, you know what? No, I'm. Uh, what I do is I find people. I have a group of buyers, whether they're investors or people looking for their first time home. I work for them. They are hiring me to scout the area. And if there's not a house that's that's available, we start calling around just seeing yeah. people that yeah. they want to they want to sell their house. And you'd be surprised how you know, many people we find that just want to sell their house. And then right there, they're like, I never really thought about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, and, and again, you're creating the rapport. You're creating the um, you're creating that. Um, I don't want to say easeability, but it's, you, you create that comfortness. Absolutely. Yeah. Now they feel more comfortable. They're like, you know what? Yeah, let's talk. You know what? Now, even if they say, uh, oh, I can't talk right now. Boom. Yeah. That's another one that I get. You know what? I just can't talk right now. Because if you call calling cold calling, they could be driving home. Their kid yeah. could have just tipped over a bowl of spaghetti. You don't know what's happening in their life. So you know what? Set up a time to call back. Got it. What, what's a better time? Yeah. You know what? Let me text you my number. Yeah. Call me at your earliest convenience. That's, that's what I do too. So they have it. Yeah, I like that. That's that's a great point. It, it, if you if you're cold calling, you get a seller on, and they say they don't have time. Great. When's a good time? If they're not telling you no or expletives, you're you're call, They're in your follow up campaign until they yeah. say a hard no, and 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 get, stop calling me. I'm gonna report you. Okay, got it. I'm 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 done. You don't want to waste your time with sellers at, that are adamant and are giving you hard no's. There's, there's plenty of opportunities out there. And for an instance, there was one that I drove by that had four dwellings on it. It was run down, overgrown. I called the owner up and, he, and I got his son because oh. that was the number that was a because father gave his son the number. And, he, and I asked him, I'm like, hey, is this Frank? And uh, no, it's not. No, this isn't Frank. And, that, and, he's, and he hung up, and he hung up. And I'm like, so sorry to bother you. 
I'm just trying to track down Frank. He seems to be the owner of this property. And he's like, well, that's my dad. Here's his number. Boom. And <laughs> that's it. Hang up to, I called Frank and I, Frank was like, oh, I'm not selling the property. It's been there apparently for 20 years. Oh. I'm like, okay, <laughs> no problem. You know, I texted him back. Oh, Frank, I appreciate you just taking the call and talking to me. If you are ever interested, call me up and, and let me yeah. know next day. He's like, I'll I'll sell it to you, but it has to be for a good, a reasonable price. And I'm like, oh. that's when boom. I'm a reasonable I'm a reasonable person, so let's <laughs> let's have this conversation, right? Yeah. So and sure enough, we started talking. We started talking. I didn't end up buying the property or getting under contract because you wouldn't budge from the 1.2 million. Sure. It was only valued at 375,000. Wow. But, um, because everything had to be gutted. But again, it went from a hang up to getting Frank's number to Frank saying, I don't want anything to do with you to getting a number from him. So, a- yeah. Absolutely. And that, that is an example where it could, it leads to an opportunity and, and, and the business isn't hard. Would you agree? No, not it's not hard. It, it, it's a grind. It takes work. It, it, it you, you need it. And it takes time to an effort to find these leads and, a system and that's the thing and there needs to be a system in place that way right half of half of some of the leads that I've had and deals that I've had was in follow-up you, you just you just follow up with previous sellers that you had in contact with to see if they're still interested in selling but right, it takes right. time that's to do your list. that's your list that you keep and yeah there that's your list to keep using in the future for sure and another little tidbit that i like to to tell people is with objections and and sellers the the whole are you a wholesaler or i don't like to sell to investors and and i learned this obviously when i made a phone call to a lead and the first thing she said are you an investor and i said yes and she says well i don't sell to investors pause it threw me off and then i was like okay well no and then hung up so i thought about how how could i have approached that differently and what i've learned is is just ask a question with a question are you an investor i don't sell to investors really sherry can you tell me a little bit more about that what was your experience like Right, build that rapport. Yeah. Are you a wholesaler? I don't like wholesalers. They lowball me all day. Mick, I apologize that you had a bad experience, but I am a buyer. I buy properties. If you're selling, I'd like to see if we're a good fit. If we're not a good fit, we can move on. There's there's no hard feelings. I'm not asking you to sign a contract right now. If anything, I'm going to send you a letter of intent that we can review together, and then we can go from there. Does that seem fair? Yeah, it does, Paul. That seems great. Okay, great. Can you tell me a little bit about the property? It goes right back to that. Build a rapport, find out the information, and gather as much information as you can. That way you don't have to go back to the seller and ask them again because then you're going to give the illusion that you don't know what you're talking about. That's why practicing making phone calls is huge in this, and when you're just starting out and having that conversation. Yeah, and it also transfers over to when you do get to negotiations that you're comfortable talking to the sellers at that point too and with objections because you've already done this first part of yep. pre-screening. Exactly, and and you don't want to get to the closing table and there was an objection that wasn't addressed during the negotiation. So you always want to ask questions. What, is there anyone else that's involved in this property that should be looped into our conversation before we agree on a number? Yes, no, oh, my wife, my daughter, the, you know, the executor, who, who knows? Loop them in because you don't want to get to a point where you're signing a deal and you need one more signature. You might as well just hit the reset button. So either take the no and move on or take... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Let them go do their homework. Let them come back to you. That's you're you're just putting in that that in your lead funnel, right? For next week to follow up. So it's 
drill down, ask questions, overcome objections, and get it all out on the table before you start signing because you don't want to get to the table. And, and, I, and I've gotten that far. I had a, a great opportunity in my local market where she was one of ten children. She was, was the only one that was taking care of this property, and I had it for under contract signed for like $50,000. And mind you, properties in this area were going for 200 wow. Okay? So the margins, were, they were there. Um, so we get there, go to title. They do a title search. Oh, no. We need eight, eight or nine more signatures. And I'm, I'm, I'm coordinating with the, with the seller, and I'm coordinating with the title company. What, they're deceased title company oh you need a death certificate so, so i don't talk to them anymore oh my god you got to get it all out ahead of time that way you're not wasting too much of your time there was a lot of room to make in terms of profit but that ended up being a dead a dead lead it ended up going to to tax sale and that's another thing i have to get into because i haven't really explored tax sales and i don't know if this is in every area of the country, but locally here in Maryland, I think they do it once a year. So you have to, is it twice? You, well, no, it d depends on the county because okay. the county can be different, but there's two different types of tax sales and I don't want to get too far off, but no, that's okay. There's tax, there's tax deed sales and there's tax certificate sales. And the tax, uh, just a 30 second rundown, a tax certificate sale is, these are the back taxes. We want you to pay these so we can go fill potholes and yeah. you'll get this percentage back if they give it if, if they um if they pay it you'll get this percentage back and if there's 10 people there they'll bid down the percentage they get back for the tax certificate a tax interesting certificate, you're paying for the house itself you're paying for the actual property so in georgia if they start bidding on it they could go up to 170 200 dollars and you have to have that cash hand on hand within 24 hours to hand over to them now if they want to buy it, then if they, if they want their property back, they pay that with this percentage over it, and you get the percentage. You'll get a check in the mail one day. Hmm. So There's a lot more in the process because after one year, you have to do an auction. You have to run down. You have to file for the, for the tax lien. Um, you have to file for the deed, have an auction, a foreclosure auction. If no one shows up at the auction, you get the house. So yep. you may have bought a house for $5,000 because that's all the taxes that were owed, or hmm. You paid a hundred thousand dollars for the tax certificate because it's a one point nine million dollar house, and they were back a hundred thousand. They couldn't yeah. pick it up. You could have just bought that one point two million dollar house for a hundred thousand dollars. Right. If it right. goes through, but you have to do a lot of paperwork. But again, you put the money up, you sit back and wait. Yep. So, it's worth it. If you have Absolutely. If you want to buy ten tax certificates? Hmm. <clears throat> oh no, that's two hundred dollars. It might be just a two hundred dollar tax certificate. That's that's amazing, yeah. It, it, and and that's what I love about real estate. There's just so many different um, opportunities and different ways of of finding the opportunity to to make a little bit of money. But and that's why having a good group that like exactly. I did a whole tax a tax lien course. You know what I mean? So ha bringing that knowledge to the to the team is something that I hope to you know some of the stuff that I've learned. I'm learning stuff from you, and uh, I hope yeah. that we all learn learn things together. I mean, it's one big one big world out there. Uh, absolutely. So. Absolutely. And yeah. networking is key. That's for sure. Um, all right. Well, th go ahead. Just one last overcome uh, objective is you guys are just all scammers trying to get it. So, yeah. you know, mm, that's a good one. You know, this, and this, this is one big scam. And you know what? My, my, my uh, response to that, I'm sorry, Mick, that you experienced that what what happened right exactly. let talk talk to me about it talk to me about your your experience with a scammer did did they steal money from you did they did they um what did they do right and just let them talk and what is that doing that's building rapport that's the that's the first thing you need to do you know if they're not giving you a hard no or expletives Talk to them. Just talk. Just have the conversation, and and hopefully, um, I like that one. You're a scammer. Yep, that's yeah, a good one. People like to talk about themselves, so that's 
how you build rapport is when they were able to talk about themselves, but you also have to lead the conversation and bring it back to what's on hand and not let them on a tangent about their dog or something. Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> but sometimes they just need to get that off their chest. So sure. I, yes. I agree. And if it's still about the house, I'm like, okay, I'll just let them kind of vent that for a minute and, and you know, and have empathy for them because that helps to build trust there. So, yeah. Yeah, I think um, before we, we close this out, I think the main thing is, is again, sounding like a broken record, is, is building rapport and sol pro solving a problem. That that's that's what you're doing, right? You're trying to bring a solution. There, there. Whether it's a problem because it's a death in the family, it's a who knows what it is. It's it's a um, executor sale. Who knows? They just need to sell this. One of my first rehabs was a two brothers is on the MLS. They wanted to sell their parents' home. They didn't want to deal with it at all. Got a great deal. And this was through an agent. So th this is, that's just another source, a lead funnel that can be nurtured. And I guess my, what my point is, is just, is just build that rapport, have a conversation. We're problem solvers. And at the same time, we need to, if you're a wholesaler, it needs to be a win, 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 win for the seller, win for you as a wholesaler and win for the buyer. If it's, if it doesn't meet those three things, it, you're, you're not going to survive in the business, right? You're not going to have continuity or longevity. Um, it, with social media, it, the world is small. And I'm sure you guys can probably pick out a handful of people out in the, the social sphere that you want to stay away from. And you can just tell, right? You can just tell who, who are the ones that are, that are legit and, and, and trying to problem solve and, and really network and make, make deals happen. So. Yep, yep. I think that is to, when you call a seller, just have the attitude that you're there to help them, you're there to be helpful, and yeah, and then it, it comes across as genuine, and you're not just pounding them and, you know, being a, I don't know, like the yeah. person that came to my door last week, I was like, you're not genuine. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, you're trying to be, you're trying, he was a younger kid, but I'm like, just kind no. of turns you off. But sure. If you have that, you know, problem solving helpful, then I think that they feel that for sure. So just to, and to close it out on, on, on my end, why one time that someone, uh, that I called somebody, they were like, I'm going to sell it for 245000 a penny less. Mm. You know, and, and it was when I first started, so I was like, oh, she's out. And I looked it up uh, like a month ago, and she sold it for forty-five thousand. Forty-five. Forty-five, because no one wanted to buy the house, and then someone stepped in, and, and she's right. like, "I just need forty thousand dollars to move." That Here's that is a great point. That yeah. lead, Sherry, that we're gonna work on. What I, he needs cash. Okay. How much cash? It started out with I need, you know, like twenty five thousand dollars. I'm like, okay. okay, well, that's. I told him right away that's not going to work. Um, but if you're open to terms and we can structure it in a way where, you know, it, I can put some money in your hand. What what's what do you need? Yeah. He dropped down to ten grand right away. Awesome. Right. <laughs> so this would ca So this is in in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's it's a cheaper property, but the numbers work great out there in terms of rentals. Um, it it meets or exceeds the one percent rule. It almost right. almost every property out there, and this one exceeds the one percent rule. So there's room for for us as a wholesaler, and, and there's room for the end buyer, and there's an opportunity for him to settle some some tax issues that he's going through but that's something that I'm excited to well and that's the other thing I wanted to talk about that hope I, I I wanted to be able to do some role playing here but I screwed that up so maybe next time um I'll do we'll we'll try to do the role playing again we'll get more people on yeah and then following that um depending you know I like to start looking at deals and 
just going over some real case studies and showing how we are structuring deals. That way our members can see it. And then that's something they can apply in, in their business. But but first, I really want to get people to and, – and the only way that I'll help, and this is for everybody in the group, that, that we will help in, in structuring and closing a deal is if you're putting work in. If you're submitting leads, the two leads per month, you've had over 100 to 150 conversations, that, that tells me that you're honing in on your craft of talking to a seller. And then you'll get our attention. Then you'll get our time to, to sit down, not record, you know, before or after my dinner, I'll get on the phone with you. What are the numbers? Let's see what we can do. That's what I want to do. That's, 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 that's strictly it. And then that's how we can build this, this network and how people can just take what they learn from here and apply in their own business and just do their own thing or continue to have a great relationship. That's it. Yeah. There, there's yeah, no ulterior motive. We'll go from here, or who you, yeah, who you meet and what happens. So, good. So, and if I make one recommendation, if if you are if if they are brand new and they are, Georgia, you look up this. Georgia is a, um, it's a single. I can't remember what it is. Single person record. So only one person that's in the conversation needs to know that you're being recorded. You could tell them you're recording it for, you know, quality assurance or whatever. Yeah, um, but record it because being able to recall the exact back and forth that you had is very difficult. Yes. You know, there's yeah. going to be there's going to be things that you missed. So if you do have it recorded on your phone and just record the the, the phone call, it would be very helpful for anybody. Yep. I've done it for myself and I've listened to it after. And Absolutely. We definitely have a couple of use cases that uh, active ones that we can go through if you want to. One thinks that you're being scammed because somebody in her neighborhood was like, "No, that's a scam. You can't do that." And yeah, I'm, I've created some some unique terms to to help it through. So, uh, Interesting, awesome. Uh, but yeah, to that, support it. That, that's a recommendation yeah. for me. Yep, I, I I agree with that 100%. All right, guys, thanks thanks for your time. Um, you guys have a happy new year and look out for the next for the next. Uh, video meetup and hopefully we'll get some role play going on for everybody out in the group because you need to practice you can't stumble you have to overcome objections and you'll get better at it and close more deals all right sounds good thank you awesome so no i appreciate you joining mick yep, sherry sure thank you being here, mick. Yep. all right guys we'll talk to you soon hey you have a good day all right. bye